What's up guys, my name is Reese Alley. I'm a partner and CEO at a construction company doing about $4 million a year. And I wanna make this video to show you what the real cost of being cheap in your business is. And this is in three different areas and the last one might surprise you. So let's go ahead and get started. As far as on the job goes, I have a handful of friends that I've really seen doing this. And I will say I have been guilty of it long ago in the past when I was first getting started. And that is legitimately being physically on the job cheap. Now that's when you have a proposal where you send it out, let's say it's $20,000 and I'm in drainage. And so I'll use that as an example, but apply this to anything. Let's say I sell a $20,000 drainage job to let's say a single family home, a customer who really doesn't know any better. And I spec out SDR 35 PVC, which is a really high quality material for draining. And then we get the job, awesome, let's go do the job. And then either if the customer's not home or you know they don't know any better, you use a thin wall white PVC or you use a black corrugated pipe that's really thin and absolutely horrible in terms of long-term durability. And because they don't know any better and you're saving 50% on the cost of the material because you're using the wrong one and they didn't know any better, it is, I cannot even explain to you how stupid that is. And again, I have done it long ago in the past and I will never do it again. And I saw the consequences of that and I still see it happening even with some of my friends today. The thing is, let's say on one hand that they don't notice, they don't know any better, they don't know the difference, and you go ahead and install it. One, the durability that you sold to them on the estimate and in the proposal isn't going to happen. Eventually, they will figure it out 90% of the time. And when they do, they're going to spend the rest of their life telling all of their friends, family, neighbors, relatives, coworkers, and anybody else that comes in contact with them how much of an untrustworthy person you are. And negative is a lot more fun to talk about than positive for most people. And so those people are gonna tell other people and those people are gonna tell other people. And it creates this super unnecessary exponential bell curve of everybody hating you just because you wanted to save a buck. There's lots of situations like that. There's buying cheap equipment. I know if you're getting started, look, it is a very hard thing to be able to purchase nice new equipment. But again, have an honest conversation with yourself. If you're a really handy person, you're a mechanic, and you're able to be working on you know, all those things that break on machines and trucks and trailers, then that's probably fine for you to buy cheap stuff. But I will say, if you've been going in business for a little while and you wanna just keep buying cheap stuff, it's breaking down all the time on job sites, it can't do as good of a job, investing in the right kind of equipment is going to be a huge move. And being cheap is just gonna slow you down. We have recently gotten to this point in our business as of a few years ago. However, we used to have really, really old trucks. And again, that's what got us by for a little while. But if you're trying to level up to the next place in your business, still buying shitty trucks and terrible equipment is one, it's gonna be hard to find good help because they wanna be able to have nice, safe equipment which is the other side of the pie. If you're towing heavy equipment and you've got super old beater trucks that are way underrated, it's dangerous for your guys, it's dangerous for you, it's a huge liability, and when they break down every 10 minutes, it's really, really hard to scale a company. But getting back to the material side of things, I really, really believe, and I truly believe this, if you sell and install what you're selling to the customer on the original estimate and the proposal, and it actually works and it's good, which sounds ridiculously simple to say on a camera, you are gonna spend less money in advertising because people are gonna refer you, the product is gonna be good, you can stand behind it, and at the end of the day, you will have to charge more money. And this is the other thing, if you're always trying to be the cheapest guy on the job, it is not going to pay off. You might win more bids on a short-term basis, but the customers you're going to get are gonna be really hard to work with. They're gonna be really hard to deal with. They're always gonna be looking to cut corners or get a deal. If you're someone that's willing to cut corners and get a deal on everything you do, then maybe you should work with customers that are going to cut corners, get a deal, and be huge problems. But the good customers, the ones you really wanna work with, that pay well, that pay high priced jobs, where you can really afford the best materials and you can really afford to make a good profit margin. They're the easiest to work with, they're the nicest to deal with, and they will support your business in referrals and long-term success more than the cheap customers 100 to one every single time. So the second thing I wanna move on to is being cheap in your business. This is in the legal side of things, the advertising side of things, and the staffing side of things. So first off, in the legal sense, I've had a crash course in this area of business really in the last two years, and I put a lawyer on retainer to work with us quite consistently about eight months ago. And so I will say, in the beginning, it's really expensive to have lawyers. Ours is like $490 an hour, but I can tell you it's worth every penny. 
And it's hard to come up with terms and conditions and legal documents and things like that to protect yourself early on because one, you haven't really had any problems before if you've just started in your business. And so you don't know what things you need to be protected from. There's some stuff now where I have a list of 150 different things. Before, I couldn't have probably thought of five, but I've been screwed over 150 different times, and so you figure out how to deal with those. If you haven't done that yet, and you haven't been in those situations yet, although it seems like a complete waste of money, because you're like, well, what's the worst that could happen? If you're cheap in that area, and you don't at least get a lawyer to help you write the terms and conditions for the first time, just something general that you can copy and paste for a lot of your customers that's very applicable. I guarantee you a thousand bucks spent on a lawyer now to have just a simple terms and conditions that you can put in a lot of your contracts is going to save you a hell of a lot more than a thousand dollars with the first customer that tries to sue you. Whether it's your fault or not, it's going to happen and you need to be prepared. Don't go on Rocket Lawyer. Don't go on ChatGBT and come up with something don't use the standard form documents on Jobber or LMN or something like that. Make your own. It's specific to you and what you need to be protected by. And go get a lawyer. Get help with it. Save the money and do that before buying another trailer. The other huge topic is in the section of employment. Having cheap guys doesn't work. I don't know how else to say it. If you have staff that is extremely underpaid, at least from the industry standard of what you guys do. Let's say the industry standard for a laborer is, let's say, $18 an hour in construction. If you are paying $15 an hour and you only look for people that are absolutely desperate for a job, they're probably not the best fit. Now, I am 100% on board with helping people get on their feet and getting on, on board. However, if they are scraping by at a tiny wage, they're always going to be looking for another job. They're not going to be trainable at all. They will not be able to think for themselves. They will not be able to make decisions for themselves. And while you think, oh, great, because I've got cheap labor, I'm going to make a lot more money. When in reality, it is the quite exact opposite because now you're just babysitting a bunch of grown men because they can't think for themselves because they're not high quality people. And you have to have that to grow your business so you as a business owner can get them started on something and then you can go put your energy on something else that's more important than doing the physical job or whatever task they are doing at the time. When you get to the point of your business where you have to have middle and upper level management, it is 10 times more important than even the guys that are laboring on the ground because those people are the exact people that are supposed to take mental energy, mental load, and tasks off your plate that are much more difficult and more complex than physically doing the job most of the time. And so in the past, I've had very cheap estimators, I've had very cheap financial people, and after spending double the amount of salary on different estimators and different financial people and different managerial staff, including lawyers, I can tell you 100%, you are paying double the price, but you are getting probably quadruple the amount of work, and more importantly, you can assign them a task, they can perform it in your absence, and you can trust their judgment. And what that means is you as a business owner can now take your focus and go put it somewhere else. And you can keep going and keep going and keep going. But if you're always having to double check and babysit and go through every single thing and task you give someone, twice and three times and four times and five times. And if you have an estimator, every single proposal he writes, you have to skim and scan every single part of it to make sure there's no spelling errors and grammatical errors and just simple stuff that you shouldn't have to be paying attention to. It's really gonna weigh on you as a business owner. You're not gonna get farther. You're not gonna be able to go to higher levels and you're not gonna be able to focus on better areas of your business that are a more profitable, better use of your time. So moving on to the third and final area I wanna talk about is how all of this affects the big picture as an entrepreneur. This is not something that is really a financial outcome or a financial number, but all of the things that I just talked about, if you can have the mindset of taking the higher road, not the easy one, not the one that feels good when you're you know, in the job in the morning and it's just easy to do this and save a little bit of money. When a customer is wrong, whether he's wrong or you're right or whatever the case is, you take the high road and take responsibility for assuming what you told them wasn't good enough and they might have not understood, 
again, to a degree, you take care of them. You figure things out. Let's say that they have a problem with something that you didn't explain very well. It's really easy sometimes for you to hide behind the contract, but if you take responsibility for you not explaining that well enough, you didn't make a video that they could watch for how the whole job goes and setting expectations and all these things. And every time a customer has a question, you get angry because they're asking you a question when instead you should have taken responsibility for what you should have told them in the first place and setting those expectations. And all of those different things where that is being expensive, that is being high end, that is the high road, that is the employer that every single employee wants to work for and wished they worked for. As someone that takes responsibility for their mistakes, other people's mistakes, and the customer's mistakes, right? Because at the end of the day, if you can't take personal responsibility for that, then what are you gonna be able to control? You won't be able to control anything. You'll be a ship without a steering wheel, without sails. You'll be a boat without a rudder. You'll just be flailing around in the entrepreneurial world, not knowing where the hell you're going and not being able to control at all how fast you're going, what waters you're in, and whether you're just about to run up on the shore. Taking personal responsibility, taking the high road, no matter what, take responsibility for everyone's mistakes, whether they're your fault or not. And at the end of the day, just remember that you can either be right or you can be wealthy. You cannot be both. Ego has no place in any of this. I hope all this makes sense. I hope you guys can use these tips and tricks to make more money in your business. And um, if you guys are making a ton of money, hit a subscribe button, hit a comment, and let everybody know. I hope you're doing great. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, or you hated everything you've seen, please put that in the comments too, and also subscribe. So hope you guys made a bunch of money, and I'll see you in the next one.